Hello and welcome to another video. So after I took my old GTX 650 apart and replaced the thermal paste, I wasn't ready to take it back to the shelf just yet. Because if you put this much work into a graphics card, you wanna get something out of it. So before we get started, let's review the GTX 650 specifications to get a sense of what we're dealing with. The GeForce GTX 650 was released in September of 2012 and is part of NVIDIA's 600 series of graphics cards and uses the GK107 GPU which is based on the Kepler architecture. It has 384 shader units and 8 265MB GDDR5 modules which result in a combined VRAM capacity of 2GB. Along with the power it receives from the PCI Express slot, the GTX 650 also needs an additional 6-pin power connector which puts the card as a TDP of 64 watts, which is kinda weird because as far as I know the card could pull as much as 75 watts from the PCI Express slot alone, so I don't really know why the 6-pin connector is there. Now for the practical part of this video. First I got to work on my server and swapped out the Radeon RX 570 that is normally in there for the GTX 650. To take performance measurements I used the Heaven, Valley and Superposition benchmarks. For stress testing I used Heaven running in a continuous loop. So how does the GTX 650 perform on stock settings? Short answer, not great. It's an entry level card from 2012, what do you expect? But I guess achieving super high frame rates wasn't really the point of this overclocking adventure anyways, since I just wanted to know how far this old graphics card can push itself beyond the stock specs. On these stock settings, the GTX 650 runs at a core clock of 1.058 GHz and a memory clock of 2.5 GHz. So I got to work in MSI Afterburner and immediately maxed out the core voltage slider. Ideally I would also want to max out the power target and temperature target sliders, but sadly on this card they were not adjustable. I then tested myself towards the max stable overclock of this card. The ASIC quality as seen in GPU-Z would suggest that we can get an acceptable overclock out of this card, and so after over an hour of stress testing I landed at a max stable core overclock of plus 208 MHz, which puts the core clock to 1.254 GHz, just 2 MHz below the RX 570. Of course the core clocks of these two cards are nothing to compare since they are from very different times and architectures but it is still kind of funny to see a graphics card from 2012 almost catch up with one more recent like the RX 570. After I got the core clock sorted out I began to overclock the 2GB of GDDR5 memory on this card. As previously stated in my teardown video of this card, this GTX 650 sadly uses the Alpida GDDR5, which is not generally known to be an awesome overclocker. And so I only could overclock the memory by 250 MHz, putting it to 2.75 GHz. Going beyond that resulted in um, this. Yes, the card immediately hardlocked and was putting out artifacts that look a lot like the ones seeing on failing RTX Turing cards. It was not the first time I saw these types of artifacts on one of my graphics cards however, because my dead GTX 780 Ti has done the exact same when it died. The GTX 650 survived however, and the thing I'm taking away from this is that I'm now 99% sure that my GTX 780 Ti is mostly still functional and just has a dead memory chip that spits out these artifacts whenever I'm hitting the memory with a 3D application. But let's get back to the GTX 650 for now. With the achieved overclocks of plus 208 on the core and plus 250 on the memory, I began to run the benchmarks a second time. And here are the results. The GTX 650 achieved noticeable better scores on all benchmarks. The card performed about 15.5 to 17.1% better than stock, which fits pretty good for the 18.5% bump in core clock and the 10% bump in memory clock it could achieve. In terms of temperatures, the card stayed around where it already was. Even with a single fan that is locked to a max of 63% in the card's VBIOS, it stayed below 70 degrees at around 65 degrees on stock and 67 degrees when overclocked. As a finishing sentence, I would say that the Palette GTX 652GB is maybe a good fit for an eSports game like CSGO or any kind of MOBA games, but I think I can say that I had my fair share of fun playing with this card and trying to get all the extra clocks out of it. Until we see each other again, bye!